Hello and welcome to this tech tip from Will. In this video I will look at the different editions of Windows Server 2016. By the end of this video you will be familiar with the different editions of Windows Server 2016 and will be able to choose the right one for your needs. So let's get started. In this video I will look at 5 different editions of Windows Server 2016. I will start by looking at the 3 main editions, Windows Server 2016 Essentials, Windows Server 2016 Standard and Windows Server 2016 Data Center. Later on in this video I will look at 2 more specialized editions, Windows Hyper-V Server 2016 and Windows Storage Server 2016. It's worth noting at this point that there is no multi-point edition of Windows Server 2016. In earlier versions of Windows Server, multi-point was a special edition that allowed multiple users to share a single computer. Multi-point edition essentially works like this. Each user is given their own workstation which consists of a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. These workstations are then connected to the multi-point server. Despite being connected to the same physical computer, each user would receive their own independent Windows experience. This type of setup was commonly found in classrooms and lab environments. With Windows Server 2016 there is no standalone multi-point edition. Instead, the multi-point edition has been superseded by a new role called the multi-point services role. When the multi-point services role is installed, you can turn your Windows Server 2016 server into a multi-point server. Now that we've identified the different editions of Windows Server 2016, let's now take a look at what each edition can actually do. The first edition I will look at is the Essentials edition. Windows Server 2016 Essentials is aimed at small businesses that require a basic server solution. Since it's aimed at smaller organizations, the Essentials edition is designed to operate as a single server network, although it can operate alongside other servers if necessary. With the Essentials Edition, there are limits imposed on the number of users and devices that can connect to the server. To be more specific, the Essentials Edition can support up to 25 users and 50 devices, making it suitable only for the smallest of networks. When you purchase the Essentials Edition, you purchase the right to install the operating system only once. You can install Essentials either on a physical computer or a virtual server, but not both. Also, when installing Essentials, there are no server core or nano server interfaces available. With Essentials, you'll always receive the desktop experience interface and there's nothing the administrator can do to change this. According to Microsoft, Windows Server 2016 Essentials can support up to two physical processors and rather interestingly up to 64GB of RAM memory. The reason why I say interestingly is because in my opinion this memory limit is extremely low. Considering that even Windows 10 Home Edition can support up to 128GB of RAM memory, 64GB is an interesting limit. Why Microsoft decided to release a server operating system with such low memory scalability, I have no idea. When choosing to deploy Windows Server 2016 Essentials, some of the questions you should ask yourself are Do I need Server Core or Nano Server? If you do, the Essentials will not meet your needs. Is the business likely to expand past the 25 user and 50 device limits? If the answer is yes, you could find Essentials too limited. Also, keep in mind the 64GB limit on RAM memory. If the server is running memory intense applications like SQL or Exchange for example, Essentials may struggle to cope with the workload. Let's now take a look at the Standard and Data Center editions. Since these editions are quite similar, I will look at the two of them together. 
Windows Server 2016 Standard Edition is aimed at small to medium-sized businesses that require a small virtualized infrastructure. Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition, on the other hand, is designed for very powerful servers and is suitable for highly virtualized environments such as data centers and large enterprises. When you purchase the Standard Edition, you are licensed to install the operating system three times. One of these installs is permitted on a physical server, whilst the other two can be used for virtual servers. Understand though, in order to stay compliant with Microsoft licensing, all three of these installs must be running on the same physical server. You cannot purchase a copy of Windows Server 2016 Standard Edition, install it on a physical server and then install the two virtual instances on a different physical server. All three installs must be running on the same physical server. If you later require more virtual instances, you'll have to purchase another Standard Edition license, which would permit a further two instances to be created. The Data Center Edition works in a similar manner. When you purchase a Data Center license, as with the Standard Edition, you can install Windows Server 2016 just once onto a physical server. However, once installed, the Data Center Edition then permits an unlimited number of virtual machines to be licensed on that physical server. In other words, you can create as many Windows Server 2016 virtual instances as you want on that physical server at no additional cost. In order to get the most out of your licensing, Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition is typically installed onto very powerful servers that can accommodate multiple virtual machines. Unlike the Essentials, both the Standard and Data Center Editions allow the administrator to choose their preferred interface at the time of installation, either Desktop Experience or Server Core. The Desktop Experience interface provides a full graphical user interface, including File Explorer, a Desktop, Taskbar and a Start menu. With the Server Core interface, the majority of the graphical interface is stripped out. With Server Core, the user interface is administered entirely from the Command Prompt and Windows PowerShell. It's worth noting at this point that the minimal server interface introduced in Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2012 R2 has been removed in Windows Server 2016. Instead, Microsoft have introduced a new interface called Nano Server. Nano Server is only available in Windows Server 2016 Standard and Data Center editions. Of the different interface types, Nano Server is the most lightweight. So lightweight, in fact, that you cannot log into it locally. Instead, Nano Server is administered entirely from remote. From a hardware standpoint, both the Standard and Data Center editions can address more hardware than the Essentials edition. Up to 64 physical processors and up to 24 terabytes of RAM memory. In terms of feature set, both the Standard and Data Center editions support all of the core Windows Server 2016 features. However, Windows Server 2016 Data Center edition includes a few additional features that aren't available in the Standard edition, including Storage Spaces Direct, Storage Replica, Shielded Virtual Machines, and a new networking stack with additional virtualization options. When deciding whether to deploy Windows Server 2016 Standard or Data Center Edition, the main question you should ask yourself is, how many virtual instances, if any, do I require? If you need just one or two virtual instances, then the Standard Edition should meet your needs perfectly. However, if you plan on deploying more virtual instances, either now or in the future, then you might want to consider the Data Center Edition instead. Another important consideration is whether you plan to use any of the features exclusive to the Data Center Edition, such as shielded virtual machines. If you do plan on using these features, then you have no choice but to purchase the Data Center Edition, since the Standard Edition doesn't include these features.
That covers the three main editions of Windows Server 2016. In the real world, these are the editions you're most likely to come into contact with, but there are a couple of specialised editions too, which you might run into. The first of these is Microsoft Hyper-V Server 2016. Hyper-V Server 2016 is available free of charge and is a download from the Microsoft website. As the name suggests, Hyper-V Server 2016 is a lightweight, out-of-the-box hypervisor and is designed to do nothing other than host virtual machines with Hyper-V. When you install Hyper-V Server 2016, you essentially get a server core interface with the Hyper-V role pre-installed. All the administrator has to do is to configure the role. Since there is no desktop experience interface available, all local administration of Hyper-V Server 2016 is done by the command line and by using Windows PowerShell. Since Hyper-V Server 2016 is nothing more than a hypervisor, it comes with an extremely limited set of roles and features. In fact, the only roles and features that can be installed are those that we can integrate with Hyper-V such as failover clustering to create highly available Hyper-V clusters, file and iSCSI services to connect your virtual machines to shared storage devices, and Windows Server Backup so that you can back up your virtual machines. It's also worth noting that Hyper-V Server 2016 can be installed completely free of charge and requires no licensing whatsoever. That being said, all virtual machines that run on the server do have to be licensed. Unlike the standard and data center editions, you get no free virtual machine licensing with Hyper-V Server 2016. The final edition I will look at is Windows Storage Server 2016. Windows Storage Server 2016 works slightly differently to the other editions we've looked at. Windows Storage Server 2016 can be obtained either directly from Microsoft or from hardware distributors approved by Microsoft. Typically, Windows Storage Server 2016 comes either pre-installed or bundled together with some kind of hardware storage device. According to one of the Microsoft blogs, Windows Storage Server 2016 comes in two different editions, the Workgroup Edition and the Standard Edition. The edition you end up with depends entirely on the type of storage device you purchase. Let's look at some of the differences between the two editions. The first difference is the number of CPUs. With the Workgroup edition, just one CPU is supported, whereas the Standard edition can address up to two CPUs. When it comes to RAM memory, the Workgroup Edition can address up to 32GB of RAM, whereas the Standard Edition supports an unlimited amount of RAM. In terms of disk support, Workgroup can support a maximum amount of 6 disks, making it suitable only for smaller storage devices, whereas Standard supports an unlimited number of disks. From a user limit standpoint, the Workgroup Edition has a maximum limit of 50 users. Standard, on the other hand, supports an unlimited number of users. Also, the Workgroup Edition imposes limits on the number of concurrent SMB connections to 250 connections, whereas the Standard Edition has no such limits and supports an unlimited number of connections. Beyond this, both editions of Storage Server 2016 support SMB and NFS file sharing, Active Directory domain join, iSCSI target and boot functionality, and Windows Storage Spaces. However, the standard edition also includes some advanced storage features which are not found in the Workgroup edition, namely deduplication, branch cache, and virtualization support. Well, that concludes our look at the different Windows Server 2016 editions. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to install Windows Server 2016 and will perform a clean installation of Windows Server 2016 Data Center Edition. I hope that you've enjoyed this video from Tech Tips from Will. For more videos covering Windows Server 2016, check out our YouTube page. And don't forget to support our videos by liking them and subscribing to our channel.
Many thanks, and we'll see you on the next Tech Tip.